Very nice introduction, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you good news. We are on the cusp. We're on the cusp of positive change that is going to bring good things to the added manufacturing industry and us as users. Now, over the last 12 months, I've seen positive progress, and perhaps historically, we'll look back and say 2018 was a pivotal moment in time, but it's going to be hard to detect. These statements are not made based on technology advancements or material advancements or application advancements. Instead, these statements and my position about being on the cusp is based entirely on attitude, action, beliefs, and perceptions. A perceptible change in the attitudes and the conversations in our industry. Now, when I say on the cusp, I'm not talking about a physical change, a seismic change, a destination or coming to an end. No, I'm talking about entering into a transformative phase represented by this tadpole, just starting to grow its legs, picking up another mode of locomotion. I originally considered using a butterfly transforming to, or a caterpillar transforming to a butterfly, but I thought, no, 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 that's not fitting of the gritty world of engineering and manufacturing. So that's a tadpole. Now, as Jim said, I've been uh, one of the cynics in the industry one of the doubting Thomases. But I think it's cause to celebrate right now, and I think it's significant that I, with my past position of being doubting Thomas and battler of hype, statements like revolution and disruption and sweeping change are things that I have fought. I have been the little boy in the tale that has said, the emperor has no clothes, and that's the emperor without clothes. So for me to turn my message around and be more positive and talk about this change that's going to be good for all of us in the industry, all of the stakeholders, is a rather significant moment in time. Now, it's taken me a little time and a little effort to see clearly that's intentionally a fuzzy, hazy picture. It, this realization did not crystallize at one moment. It took time to transform and to be realized for myself. And I bring that up because a key element of my message on what to do while we're on the cusp and entering this new phase is going to be related to your own perceptions, your own filters. So it took me time for that hazy picture to come into focus, to see that we're in a transition phase moving, to use a metaphor, from an unpaved B road to a paved A road, to have easier navigation, easier transportation, and a clearer path. But what do I mean by cusp? That's the word, the cusp there, the slide is black. So by definition, a cusp is a transition between states. And as I was putting the presentation together, I thought, you know what, they might have the wrong impression. They may think the cusp looks like this, that we're going uphill and we're about ready to crest the top of the hill and then come down. We're smooth sailing, easy going, everything's downhill and we just roll at a momentous speed. But that would be incorrect. What's closer to the truth is that we're pushing towards this cusp, this transition point to reach a level surface, a level plane where our navigation and our pathfinding is clearer and easier, but that's still not the whole truth. And to show you the whole truth, I've got to revisit the concept of the hype cycle. Please, no groans. I've re talked about the hype cycle for each of the last five years because it's just such a great model. And now this one is gonna be hard. So imagine here, this image is one of big peak, big valley, and then digging yourself out gradually and slowly until you reach a, a steady state, the plateau of productivity. Gartner's hype cycle says the peak is the peak of inflated expectations. That's when all the hype's going on, overpromise, underdeliver. Then you disappoint the world, they drop into the trough of disillusionment. And then where we are now, which is exciting, is in the slope of enlightenment. And enlightenment is the key operative word here. There are a lot of elements related to the slope of enlightenment, but the one that's pertaining to today's conversation is that information is developed information is expanded, and information becomes available to us in a, ready, in a ready way instead of us digging and trying to unearth it, which allows us to move forward. And this is an element of the cusp. The other element of the cusp, so with a, I'm sorry, with a hype cycle, the true representation of where we are in this cusp is we still have an uphill slope to proceed, but that the incline of that slope decreases as we continue forward. And the key element of the cusp, and what I mean by the cusp, is all the stakeholders, users, vendors, scientists, researchers, 
standards organizations, all of them, are now aligning and working in concert to the same goal, the same direction, to practical, real solutions instead of painting big pie-in-the-sky dreams of the world's going to change and it's going to be fantastic as soon as you plug in this machine. So it's this time of realism, but also with excitement and making progress. So still pushing uphill, I don't want you to get you the wrong idea. So it's not a seismic change, it's a transition, but do not expect in the near term to have these decrease significantly. You will still have to put in the time for your added manufacturing initiatives. You will still have to put in the effort. You will still have to be persistent to make it work, and you should still expect setbacks, which is a kind word for failures along the way. That is still going to exist. We don't have a rosy path in front of us. It's just a better, easier path. So it took me some time to realize that the cusp was there. This is a little timeline. What that says is September 2017. In September 2017, I was here at the TCT show. And unlike previous years at TCT show and other events, where we were painting these rainbows and chasing unicorns and people were entering through the doors with stars in their eyes, expecting a magic wand to be handed to them and they can plug something in the wall and they're now a manufacturer. Instead of that attitude and plenty of people on the floor exhibiting their wares, willing to fuel that attitude, I noticed a palpable change. It went from rainbows and sunshine to gears and realism and honest conversations of what are you trying to do and how can we get there as a team. However, I was not ready to discover this new reality. I wasn't looking for it. My mind was a bit closed off, so I left the TCT show with my mind unchanged with respect to the conversation that we're having right now. So my gestation period was September 2017, TCT show, into October where nothing happened. I wasn't looking for the information, no information came to me, but ultimately into November 2017. And what happened then was Formnext, powered by TCT. Big event, Frankfurt, Germany, will be in November of this year also. At Formnext, a huge show with a very wide demographic, Lots and lots of people and vendors there from the traditional manufacturing side, lots and lots of people from additive manufacturing side coming together, and I noticed the same vibe, the same change in conversation, the same realism and pragmatism of we've got a job to do, let's roll up our sleeves, instead of painting these rosy pictures amongst this very diverse uh, demographic. And it was palpable. Because my mind had been shifted a little bit to look for it, I heard it loud and clear. So it was all about a different vibe from both sides of the equation, user and vendor, and that's what I'm talking about being on the cusp, coming together and aligning our interest and aligning our actions. Now, I'm going to renege on my promise in the abstract. It, say, it says that I will show you evidence of why the cusp exists. As I was putting this together, looking at the word vibe or vibration, I'm like, I can't do that. I can't do that because it's a concept. It's a fuzzy concept, and it, there's not this discrete moment in time. And as Ben Franklin said, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So I'm not going to try to do it. I'm going to offer you a little evidence, and then I'm going to ask you to find the evidence of the change yourself. The little bit of evidence are headlines over the last seven to ten days. Media has to get your attention. Lots of puffery in the headlines, lots of, lots of hyperbole in the past just to get your attention. Now we're backing off into a matter-of-fact mode, which means to me that the users are expecting a matter-of-fact mode, which means the user mentality is realigning. But it also means that the vendors supplying the press releases for the information that goes into the news are also coming at it with a realistic, not overblown position. For example, IMTS, a big show in... Uh, in the States ended two weeks ago. Headline, IMTS, traditional manufacturing, integrating additive manufacturing. No statements of sweeping change, big disruption, and manufacturing as we know it is gonna be forever improved. No, just the facts. Another headline, ASTM International rolls out $300,000 to fund additive manufacturing. ASTM is a standards organization. ASTM has been doing yeoman's work over the last seven to 10 years to build ASTM or, uh, AM standards, but it's all been giving the human resources and the computer resources no funding. So here, 
an organization's been around for decades and decades and decades, funding additive manufacturing. This is the one I love the best. It's got the word celebrate in it. Siemens celebrates. Not a change in the way it's doing business. It celebrated a basic fact that they were able to run a 3D printed turbine burner for 8,000 hours. That is cause to celebrate. But in the past, that would have been ho-hum news because you just hadn't reached the level of hype. Things are changing. At IMTS, two manufacturers, well, many release new products. Two I've got here is HP and 3D Systems. HP launched a new metal system, calling it MetalJet. The headline reads, HP launches MetalJet 3D printing technology. Again, no puffery. Now, honestly, HP's press release had a little bit of puffery and reinvent manufacturing and all that, but even the amount of embellishment was decreased over previous years. So a realignment of thinking and attitudes and what we need to do as a team to move forward. And finally, 3D Systems and GF Machining, they partnered up to release a new metal machine called the DMP Factory 500. Their headline is, Machining announced scalable DMP Factory 500. 3D Systems at the peak of the hype was the most likely to be screaming from the rooftops that we are gonna rock your world, we're gonna change your world, and for 3D Systems now to be saying, we've got a brand new system. It's built for manufacturing, it's all about scalability. It represents this new attitude, this cusp, the shift in attitude and conversations and willingness to align ourselves and work together. So I'm not gonna to try to convince you anymore, I'm gonna ask you to convince yourselves here at the TCT Show. So as you go through the exhibits over the next two and a half days, I'm gonna ask you two favors. One is to consider this conversation that I'm proposing that we've reached a cusp, a change in the vibe, the dynamic, the conversations, the expectations and the actions in additive manufacturing. And just by asking you to possibly sense that, I've now opened a filter for you to consider it, something you wouldn't have considered before. And the other thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to remove your preconceptions, with, which are filters, as you walk the show floor, and I guarantee you, you will see more possibilities, more opportunities, more applications that you can do if you just open your mind up instead of shutting down. We're gonna talk about filters some more. The other thing I'm gonna to ask to really drive home my point, pause for 10 seconds and imagine in your mind how many 3D printers on the show floor have the color orange. Time's up. I'm sure you could think of a few. Now I'm gonna ask you, as you're traversing the halls, identify all the machines that have the color orange in them. I guarantee you, you're gonna find a lot more than you would have if you wouldn't have been filtering for that information. Orange is a metaphor for technology classes, technology, technology uh, themselves, vendors, applications, materials, material classes. We have a tendency as human beings to shut our vision down, to filter information out, to fit what the past has already told us, and we as one year, 10 year, 20 year veterans of additive manufacturing have a very real possibility of filtering things out. So enter the floor, remove the filters, because filters are very dangerous since we're in this transitional phase of the cusp. Change is happening. And if we have the same mindset from our experiences in the past, we will not see the true reality and not see all the opportunities. So we take a beautiful landscape of orange, you know, oranges and there's grays and there's greens in there. This is gonna be horrible now with this light on this screen. And we take a filter. This is just a clear filter. It's not filtered on any color. It's not darkening, it's not lightening. The ring represents the filter, but we've got to remove them. If we look at traditional manufacturing, their filter may be limited to just forming, you know, forming and machining and casting and excluding all additive manufacturing because it doesn't fit in their reality and they haven't remove the filters. But we're not gonna talk about them, we're gonna talk about you. You could be jaded, you could be cynical on a technology or a vendor or an application and see the world of additive manufacturing in shades of gray. And if you could really see that image decently, you see that you can tell what the, ge uh, the geography looks like, what the landscape looks like, but you've lost a lot of detail. You're not getting the full richness of the picture. Worst case is going full binary, black and white. Is it good, is it bad? Does it work, does it not work? And just purely binary, if you've gotten yourself to that point, your filters are really hurting you because you can't tell anything other than a few puffy white clouds and nothing else. And stick with my color theme, this image, I've removed all the oranges and all the greens. You see the detail there, but you can't see the richness of the landscape. You can't see all the opportunities. And again, the color represents 
vendors, material classes, machine classes, processes, and applications. We've got to remove those filters, basically erasing the lessons learned from the past and being open to what's coming because we are on the cusp of positive change. What does the change mean? So I've got my big boulder here. On the right is a man pushing, that is the user. On the left is a woman pulling. That is the vendor side of things. In the past, it used to be more of a battle. Buy from me and you make it work. Now we're, we're seeing alignment working together. But also pushing this boulder forward are the researchers and the scientists, the developers, the training organizations, the consulting organizations, the uh, standards organizations, working as a unified body to a common goal. And guess what happens when we're all going in the same direction? The boulder gets smaller. And it will continue to get smaller. So our path will ease over time. His success is going to build on success and build on its, its success. Kind of a reverse snowball effect. Instead of growing as it goes downhill, this one is being eroded and chiseled away as it rolls. So ultimately, it may get as small as a pebble that we can easily kick down the road. We may find that from this cusp, we continue on change and move from the B road to an A road, and then ultimately to a motorway faster than we ever thought because we're all of the same mind and working to the same goals. We will find, because of this change, because of us being on the cusp, that we as users will have the information and guidance we need. In the past, it has been up to us as a user to unearth what we needed to know, what technology, how to make it work, what considerations, what, you know, the whole picture to have success, and we were on our own. Now, because we're at this cusp of change, we're going to see information coming to us. A richer body of information being developed and a richer body of information made easily accessible to us, which is going to further accelerate our successes going forward. We're going to see advancements in technology, material, and hardware, but aligned more towards what we as a user community want. We're going to see more technology. We're going to see technology refinements, but not just because they can, not building a better mousetrap and hoping that we're interested, not solving a problem that no one realizes that they have, but instead tackling the things we need to do today to get into production or tooling or whatever we want to do. So we'll see the advancements. You take those filters off, go on the show floor, I guarantee you you're going to see some of them here at the show. We're also going to see our obstacles diminish. So everyone working together, gaining momentum, new technology, more information, it's going to reduce the obstacles that stand in our way. Either reduce the height so we can peek over and see what the path looks like, reduce it all the way down so we can step over it, or make them small so we just step right around them. We're going to have less resistance to us moving forward with additive manufacturing on the heels of the, of the cusp. And all of that's going to lead to snowballing into more applications, giving us all the opportunity to have the possibility, more likely possibility, of going the full breadth from models to legacy parts in a production context. All of this is going to develop, and in a reasonable amount of time, it's no longer going to be the elites of Siemens and Airbus pulling off production. It's going to be something made available to us as Acme Corporation, a small or mid-sized enterprise. So we're going to see positive change. However, even though it's going to increase the possibilities of new opportunities and reduce the threat of failure, so everything is going to be buoyed up, we still have headwinds. That says status quo, it's a brick wall. That is a big headwind. That is the most insidious force against anyone who wants to have an additive manufacturing initiative. It usually wins. Path of least resistance. Do what we've always done because it takes no effort and there's very little risk. That thing is impossible to fight. So we've got to find ways around that, building off of the power of the cusp. What the status quo leads to, in my mind, is tunnel vision. Looking at the same destination, the same goal, looking for the same results, slightly improved, and the walls, these thick, hardened walls of this train, boy, that really washed out. That's a train tunnel, by the way, of this train tunnel are formed by standard operating procedures, quality parameters, expectations, mechanically, thermally, electrically, that that's what we need. If you jauntily head down the train or down the tunnel, the odds of success with additive manufacturing are slim to none. We've got to resist doing what everyone does. Another headwind is not everyone is 
singing from the same hymnal. Not everyone is on the same page. Not everyone is following the discipline of being straightforward and honest. We do have plenty of bad eggs still. It'll change and it'll diminish. By bad eggs, I mean misrepresenting what they can do, how they can do it, and what benefits you can have delivered. So we got to be wary of them. We also, looking at the title of the last one said the truth. This one said the truth, alternate realities. The other thing about the truth, and this is a lesson I learned recently. This is a picture of brown eggs. At the same time, from the same brown egg, we could end up with a boiled egg, poached egg, or a fried egg. I was at a conference a couple of months ago. A very informed person, VP level at Intel Corporation, charged with looking at product innovation, spoke just before me. Her message on additive manufacturing was 180 degrees from the message I stepped up on the stage to deliver immediately after her. We were polar opposites. What I mean by alternate realities is that if you dig in, you can find that the same set of facts can yield two truths or more truths. And me and this woman named Irene sat down and we conversed and found out that 90% of our beliefs and understanding were identical. It was the interpretation or the viewport we wanted to look at that took us in different directions. So that is a, that's a challenge because like what we heard today uh, from Airbus, they were very good saying we're doing production, but in these circumstances. So we got to understand what the reality, which path the reality is coming from on the information being provided to us. So that's what I expect to happen on the heels of the cusp as we enter into it, as we transition through it. Now, what should you do to capitalize on it, to o overcome changes? First off, I've beaten a dead horse, but remove those filters. Your perceptions of the past will jade your perception of the reality going forward. And being on the cusp, being on the cusp of change, we cannot allow that to happen. Pull the filters off. Had a project several years ago looking at a technology, interviewing people, phone interviews, and I was shocked to find that on this one specific technology, most of the people I were talking about made up their mind on what it was and what it could do five to ten years earlier. Technology did not match their perception. It's because the filter was up, and hey, we all do it because it protects us as human beings. There's too much information flowing at us. We've got to filter some things out, including decisions we've made in the past and just stick with them, but now is the time to pull them down. We've got to break through status quo. It's a wrecking ball against that brick wall saying status quo. Here, it's about avoiding going right into the tunnel, helping to identify new destinations, Instead of going after straight at time, cost, and quality, like Airbus showed us, let's go after performance improvements or let's go after reaction time instead of cycle time. Let's change the game and also let's work very diligently to understand what the criteria are that have been established and if they're, suit, if they're fitting and suitable. So often in conversations, I find people saying, we need this, you name it, you know, accuracy of, you know, sorry, I'll talk in thousands, you know, one thousandth of an inch. If you ask the question of why, oftentimes the answer is, hmm, we always have. So we've got to work from a clean sheet and really break down and make sure that the requirements that are being specified are applicable or we're going to run the jeopardy of not implementing additive manufacturing. Also, your action. I want you to believe. I want you to be receptive to the messages. I want you to absorb everything that you can, but it'd be idiotic to accept that as fact. I want you to believe but doubt. I want you to believe but question. I want you to believe but test, inquire, and investigate. So there's two sides of this to get at the truth. So don't shut down a claim of we're going to do 100x speed over everyone else. Go ahead and let that come in, but then question it. And then on the alternate realities, ask under what conditions? So a lot of vendors have claimed in the past that we are doing flying parts for aerospace, production parts, and they leave it at that. We just heard Airbus qualify when it makes sense for them in, you know, today, near term. So if you are say, yes, okay, I'll accept that as a truth, flying parts, production for aerospace, under what conditions? And now we get to what the real reality is and we can make real decisions. Yep, oh, you can kind of read that one. Contrary to my past, I've very much been one, don't look for moonshots because don't, don't believe the hype. An American term up here, puddle jump. 
which is meant to refer to a small aircraft, less than an hour flight, so you're just up and down, puddle jumping. So we got a little Cessna representing that with moonshots. So in the past, I was all about the right-hand side and focused there for winds right now. With us being on the cusp, I'm actually highly recommending or encouraging each of you to look for your moonshots. Longer term, higher risk, higher reward, but at the same time, keep going after the puddle jumps because we need those successes today. Successes that we can show here, here's what additive can do, successes that we can learn off of, and also the filters, we all have them, but what's gonna be harder to remove are the filters from those you work with. And a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still, use these puddle jumps as evidence to those that have the blinders on or the filters up to, to start tearing those down, to open the door, to open minds, to thinking additive manufacturing. And be prepared to pounce. If you have a great idea for an application, but you find that additive is not gonna work for you today, don't stop right there. We all know it takes time to implement additive manufacturing, looking at the human resources and training and building the work procedures and how do we do quality control and on and on and on and on. If you find something, because we're on the cusp, don't stop right there if you can't do it today. Identify what the one, two, three, four critical factors are to making it possible. Set up your tentative plan, think it through, have it in your hip pocket and then just keep monitoring. Have those changed. Oh, two out of the four are gone. A year later, three out of the four. Two years later, four out of the four are gone. Great, we've got the plan, we can pull it out and you can react like that. So don't allow the past, don't allow disappointment to stop you from at least planning for the future. So in closing, it's taken us a while, 1988 to 2018 to an unnamed year. Additive manufacturing has gone from sticking with my frog theme, frog eggs, so there's a frog surrounded by frog eggs. We're a tadpole after 30 years, the legs growing out, we're in a transition phase, but it's a positive phase that's going to build on itself to create more successes. And quite honestly, I don't know when we're gonna become the frog or the toad. And I don't know that we want to be, because that means full maturity. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be awful boring, often lacking dynamic changes. I don't know if I want it to be there. I'm kind of happy being somewhere between tadpole and frog. And additive manufacturing is different. Most of us think frog, you think of a frog in the pond. Additive manufacturing is different and unique, represented by this tree frog, which is obviously of a different form. Lanky legs, big bulging eyes. And that represents additive versus the traditional world. We are different. It's up to us to understand how to use those differences and leverage those differences to get different benefits and different gains. But to truly beat that dead horse, make sure you don't remove your filters or you're gonna lose a sense of all the vibrancy that additive manufacturing offers. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe that it's truly a time to celebrate, but it's a time to celebrate a non-event, one that there isn't a moment in time when it happened, and it's a time to celebrate an event, a non-event, that most in the world will never recognize ever transpired, but all of us will benefit from it. So with that, that helps us to deliver on the promises made in the past and generate new promises that we can deliver on in the future. And it also gives us the confidence that coming together, I can, it will, and if not today, it will in the future, or I will be able to in the future, because it is coming. Since we're aligning our forces, we're changing our attitudes, changing our assumptions, it's a time to celebrate. So with that, hit the show floor, see what's out there, look for the color orange, remove the filters, and discover all the real possibilities that additive manufacturing offers you today and keep your mind open to the possibilities for tomorrow. Thank you very much.